All right, so today is 12th of November, 2024, and it's 12.39 uh, p.m. My name is Rutimi, I'm your host for this uh, analysis session. So we'll look at the fundamentals and we'll go to the technical so that we can you know, have a proper view of what will happen in the market this afternoon. Okay, uh, is it Kinaki or Kinasi? I don't know how to pronounce this. Yeah, sorry I missed the morning analysis. Not a big deal. That's why we have two sessions. So in case you missed the morning session, there's always an afternoon session for you to catch up with. So at the time, it's always 7 a.m. in the morning and 12.30 p.m. in the afternoon. So you can always plan your time to be at least. If you can attend both, fine. And if it's one, you know you can comfortably attend all well and good. <laughs> EBS, <laughs> you make me laugh with that. Okay, so let's ride on. So this afternoon, there are two, but there's one fundamental event this afternoon. The last one will be later in the night, you know, thereabout. So this afternoon by 4 p.m., there's going to be a speech from the United States by FOMC member. FOMC member Walla is going to give a speech by 4 p.m., now, speeches can be extremely volatile and sometimes it may be very difficult to trade. So what I would suggest is that as much as possible, if, if, it's, if it's possible not to be in the market at that time, it's better. But peradventure, you have running trades, you cannot close. It's still all good. Just make sure you have your stop loss in place because, like I said, speeches can be uh, erratic sometimes. So I need to let us know that for the sake of those who might be new to trading and even especially fundamentals as regards the market. Then later tonight by 11 p.m., FOMC member Aka will also give a speech from the United States. Now, if you're a day trader, you are not really expected to be in the market by that time. But again, if you have a running trade, make sure you have a stop loss in place. Stop loss is not bad. It's just there to protect your account in case things didn't go as planned. So we have between now and 4 p.m., you know, if there's any opportunity technically we can take, but let's know that it's going to be a short-term trade because normally, like two hours before the release of the news, we're not really expected to take any trade. So we only have between now and like 2 p.m. to take any possible trade that we see in the market. So I'll flip now to the technicals. We don't have anything much on fundamentals again. I'll flip over to the technicals to see uh, the opportunities that we may have for this afternoon session. Now, the technicals, what I'm seeing this afternoon, uh, I'm looking at the Euro GBP. Now, most other setups are not, the market is kind of quiet. Uh, by the way, before I even go into this, I remember the weekly outlook for yesterday. I need to give you an update, especially on gold. I remember telling us yesterday that we are bullish on the dollar and, uh, sorry, we are bearish on the dollar and then we're looking at the possibility of a bullish movement on gold. However, I remember I said that gold, if it's possible for gold to, if gold breaks above this support and resistance, it means we're looking for opportunities to buy. And if it breaks below this support here, then we we'll look for an opportunity to sell. So gold, did otherwise and broke this support zone. And uh, between yesterday and uh, this moment as we speak, gold has dropped to the tune of about 538 pips, just in line with the analysis we gave. So if you took advantage of the opportunity between yesterday and now to have taken a sell, at least if not at the exact entry, even if it's after the four hour candle close, which is somewhere around here, you should have made profit to the tune of close to 300 pips. And 300 pips in the current economy, I tell you, is a whole lot of money. 300 pips on 0 0.1 lot is $300. $300 compared to Naira, you know, is a, is a whole lot of money. 300 pips now, uh, I think our exchange rate at P prime is about 1,600 plus, you know, multiply that by three. That's a whole lot of money. That's well close to about three or 400,000 thereabouts. And if you're trading on a, uh, on a small account, you're using 0 0.01 lot, that is still equally something uh, very reasonable. So when we give the guide on this platform, especially during these analysis sessions, always take advantage of it because it can determine to a large extent how success, successful or profitable you will be trading those specific instruments 
that we analyzed. The dollar has not really gone as planned. And I gave a hint yesterday that if the dollar is selling gold, we buy. If the dollar is buying gold, we sell. So the dollar seems to have done otherwise than what we expected yesterday. But let's just see, there's still a possibility we will have a decline. So currently the market is not really so active. We don't have clarity on many instruments from now. The one that has moved so far in line with the analysis has been gold. Others, we are still waiting, like uh, this AUD USD, I'm still expecting. Now it's uh, giving us the, the full inverse and shoulder. I still believe it will reverse and buy. So now the next move of, of dollar is actually going to be determined by the fundamental events today by 4 p.m. and 11 p.m. Those are the speeches, the speeches that will be released by the FOMC member Walla and Aka. Might go a long way in determining the next move of the dollar. So if the news comes out not to favor the dollar, then we may see uh, a decline in the dollar, which is the earlier analysis. And if the dollar will reverse into itself, then we will expect pairs like Euro USD, which we have a bullish outlook on, you know, to go bullish. And uh, the same thing, GBP USD and uh, AED USD. AED USD is even looking more formidable for a buy. I see the end of inverse and I should have forming better now. And that's you know will trigger a bullish trade. So we should anticipate that happening, you know, when the news, when the speech is released by 4 p.m. and uh, even 11 p.m. So for this afternoon session, the instrument I said I'm looking at is a Euro GBP. And for this instrument, if we go down to the monthly time frame, we discover that price is actually trading around the monthly support level. And if we go down to the daily, let's go to the weekly. It's still around that support level from the monthly time frame. Still around that same level. And uh, this is a four hour. And this is a one hour. And on the one hour time frame, I can draw my trend line. And a second one at the back to form a falling wedge. While this is giving us the feel of an inverse head and shoulder, like I always say, patterns, we don't need to get hung on patterns, you know, but then they will help. If it's involved like that, it gives us additional layer of confirmation that price will go in our intended direction. So if this holds as I'm seeing it, then we should expect a breakout on the Euro GBP. So I have a bearish outlook on the Euro GBP. A bullish outlook, pardon me. A bullish outlook on the Euro GBP. Now, if it eventually evolves into an inverse and shoulder, then this region here will automatically become the neckline region. So we should look for a proper break above that neckline to trigger our bullish trade on the Euro GBP. So we are bullish biased on the Euro GBP this afternoon session. So between now and 2 p.m., if that breakout happens, then we can take a, uh, a buy trade on the Euro GBP. And if that happens, um, Bonnie Richie, let me just run through first. We'll get to the point where you can ask questions. Using Fibonacci levels, now you can see that coincidentally, Fibonacci 38.2 is uh, actually, you know, at the same point where the top of that uh, resistance zone is. So that tells you that it's quite valid. You should be looking at taking a bullish trade when price gets to that level. So if that becomes our entry point, then uh, the Fibonacci, sorry, Fibonacci 3.6 I meant. So Fibonacci 13.2 can give as much as about 26, 25, 26 pips. So Fibonacci 50 can go about 48 pips and Fibonacci 61.8 can give as much as 70 pips. So we have between 25 and 70 pips potential, you know, uh, pips to pick on this trade if everything goes just in line with this analysis. So we're bullish on the Euro GBP. And the other instrument I'm looking at is the NAS 100. Now this is an index. So it's strictly for those who are trading indices. Indices is not your thing. 
please uh, just stick with the Euro GBP because indices can be very volatile. So it's not really for everybody. Now for the NAS 100, this is NAS 100 on the daily time frame. I will consider that price, you know, is forming a rising wedge pattern, a rising wedge pattern, and it has price has made a series of a higher high, higher low, you know, higher high, higher low, higher high. So the next wave should be a higher low downwards. Now we're not seeing a corresponding resistance, but nonetheless. Uh, we still drop, we still do our top down to the next time frame, which is a four hour. And on the four hour, what I'm seeing here is a pattern that looks a lot like the head and shoulder. Now, don't forget, we saw an inverse head and shoulder forming on the Euro GDP, and I'm seeing the head and shoulder on the NAS 100. So, if this works out as we're seeing it, then it means we should be looking for an opportunity to sell NAS 100. We can still flip down to the one hour time frame. And this is what we have. So it's not necessarily a swing setup, it can be taken even as an intraday setup. Again, we have this zone as the neckline zone. So we may look to take a sell once price breaks out below this zone. So we're bearish on NAS 100 on one hour. And we're bullish on the Euro GBP also for one hour. All right, so that'll be all from my end this afternoon. I'll attend to questions and uh, we'll round up. Okay, EBA is saying, will you say it will be too late for entry on gold? Ah, entry on gold now after 500 pips. Trade with caution. So there's a thing about perfect entry. I will not encourage still taking a sell on gold, except there's a correction and a continuation. You must confirm if there's a correction, then a continuation. Correction means if price retraces back, then maybe we'll have, let's assume price retraces back to this previous uh, support, which now becomes a resistance, then you can sell for that. So if you are not having that, then, I will advise it's not the best time to enter a sell. Because if you look at it critically, this is four hour. Even on four hour, RSI is completely oversold. So it's not a good time now to look for opportunity to sell. There could be a reversal in price. And uh, if you take it again to the daily time frame, it's possible for price to retrace. And uh, I'm seeing this area possibly forming uh, in the bigger picture, trying to form another head and shoulder for a major drop. It's still analysis up to now. I'm not, we don't control the market, but if it finds support at this point, that is what may happen. So it's, it's looking more like it may go bullish, even if it's a retracement, more than selling. So I would encourage you to look for opportunity to sell, rather look for an opportunity to buy if it involves rather than selling. Okay, MK, GBP, CHF, EBS, BTC, USD. So let's quickly look at GBP. Now, GBP, CHF has been funny today. I was checking it earlier on this morning. Okay, it's trying to go back downwards. On the one hour earlier on, you know, it was actually selling around this region, then suddenly it decided to push up. Now, we should also, when you are trading, it's good you understand the characteristics of the currency pair you are trading. Very, very important. Now, GBCHF is bound to have a lot of spikes. Even like in this case, it may still sell, but you can see a very sharp uh, bullish rejection candle here. You know, So you need to understand the currency pair, the characteristics of that currency before you trade it. Now, all things being equal, this should still go bearish because if you go from the daily time frame, you can see that price is actually price actually hit a resistance here on the daily, and uh, on the four hour also we have a resistance, a resistance still the same daily time frame resistance still confirmed on four hour, and it's actually now forming a double top pattern, which will see a trigger downwards. 
So it's we have a bearish uh, outlook on the GBP CHF. However, I will only advise you enter and sell when price breaks out below this neckline region. When you have a new kind of break out below this region, then you can enter and sell on GBP CHF. RSI is already below 50, but you need that clear break. It's very important, you need that clear break. Now, if you can't wait for that clear break to happen, the other thing you can do is to put a sell stop order at the tip of this shadow here. That will also work. So you can put a sell stop order at 1.12776. That can also work. So I'm bearish on the GDP CHF. BTC USD. Now, like I said yesterday, BTC, BTC is being driven by the fundamentals of the aftermath of the US election. Donald Trump already said that if he becomes president, he will adopt the BTC, you know, as a legal tender in the US. And that's what is driving the price of BTC. And this BTC has now gone the highest level so far, you know, currently trading at uh, 86,000. Uh, earlier on, it already hit about 89, almost getting to $90,000 for BTC. That is the highest BTC has ever gone in history. So it's retracing down now to 86,800. So let's analyze this. This is the daily, let's start from the weekly. Okay. All right. So we can see there's a resistance here. Price hit the trend line, at least the tip. If you observe, I'm only concerned about the shadows this time around. And the shadows, you know, hit the trend line there. Technically, that should lead to some decline, even if it's a retracement. It necessarily doesn't mean a reversal, even if it's a retracement. So that is what is responsible for the slowdown between yesterday and today. Uh, if you go down to the four hour, Let's go down to one hour. Uh, if you have to go with the four hour, price may go up to hit this resistance once again. If it hit the resistance once again and it forms, uh, it, it may, let me use the word, it may end up forming a double top. If it forms a double top, that means we will have some appreciable decline in price. Yeah. If it forms, that's if it's a conditional statement. I'm not saying I'm not saying I'm bullish or bearish this time around. It is a conditional statement if it forms a double top. Otherwise, the other thing that may happen is that this may be looking like it's trying to form a head and shoulder. So if this forms a head and shoulder, we may still also have a decline. Otherwise, the other thing that may happen is that price may still uh, blow. If price breaks out and opens above this eye. Just wait for a retracement and buy higher. That's the, those are the two views I have. Either a retracement or reversal, or a breakout above this recent high, a retracement and a continuation. So that's my view on our BTC. So you need to wait and let the right pattern evolve. There's no signal for now. We need to understand what is happening and see the right pattern to know whether is going to be buying or selling. But if it's going to be selling, just know it's likely going to be short term because the trend fundamentally is strongly bullish. It may only sell a little and continue buying afterwards. GBP, JPY, and uh, okay. JPJPY is trying to form a symmetrical triangle. There's a one hour, there's a four hour. I think I prefer the one hour. And uh, this is evolving into possibly a double bottom. If it evolves into a double bottom, then price may go high to the next uh, point up there on the trend line. But this, if it is, if it forms a double bottom, then we might look at taking a buy if price breaks above the neckline up there. So it should still go up. Let's just watch it. It may go up. 
But if it goes up and forms a blue top, then at the break of the neckline, you can trigger a buy to the next point here, which will act as a resistance. So we can be we can be bullish on the euro, uh, sorry, on the GDP, JPY rather. US JPY, US card. US JPY, US card is the dollar, is the news from the United States, the, uh, the speech that will determine the direction. Though technically, US JPY is still bullish from the analysis of yesterday. It's still, sorry, it's bearish, I mean, pardon me. It's still bearish. The same thing, US card technically, but then is the fundamentals that will drive it. From the technicals, you can see uh, we have a rising wedge on the daily with a support on resistance and uh, a head and shoulder evolving. Technically, it's, it's a bearish setup, but then the news is what will determine. The same thing for USD card. USD card is still trading around that weekly resistance. That's where it's been since yesterday. So you can see the rising wedge, we still expect a breakout downwards, but the news will determine the next thing that will happen. U.S. oil, all right, that's the last one. Now, U.S. oil actually hit a support uh, zone yesterday, and uh, there's anticipation of a further bullish breakout. You can see we have a support zone, a support level there. We have a support here. We have a support, a support. Here, price broke through but reversed, so it's still a valid support. So this is where price is now. That's the daily time frame. So if you switch over to four hour, one hour, on the one hour now, it's forming an inverse head and shoulder. So if price breaks out above this current high, to be a time to trigger a buy on US oil. So I'm bullish on the US oil. But please take note of what I said. Price needs to break above this high for you to trigger a buy. We can fine tune it further by drawing our trend line. Uh, you can see. So it means if you can see the trend line is actually touching, sorry, that's uh, this rejection candle is actually touching the trend line. That's why you need to wait for a break above this level. Because if price does not break out above that level, this rejection candle, if it holds, price will drop again to the support. So that's that zone. More the clear, you will make more money if it buys more than selling. That's that's the thing. So it depends on what you want to take as the market moves. If the candle breaks above this zone, it's a buy. You have more opportunity to make more money. But if it reverses downwards into a sell, it's going to sell to this support, which is a short term. Will there be signal in the group today if we see any market is very quiet, honestly. So it's, it's the market. We don't just conjure up signals. If the market is good, and we can. But then you should know that by from 4 p.m., it's better to avoid trading because of the fundamental that will be released. So if you see any signal, definitely we'll post it. All right. Mm -hmm. Now we're all. I think I've attended to all the questions. Don't forget tomorrow we're having our live trading for CPI, Consumer Price Index. Last Friday, uh, I think okay, the previous Friday, we had NFP. It was quite good. We had a massive move in the market, which was very profitable trading NFP. And tomorrow will not be an exception. So if you're on the platform, you don't have an account with PU Prime, just go straight now to our website, www.puprime.com and open a live trading account. You'll be required to verify your account by providing two documents, your means of ID, government issued ID, and your proof of residence. But then I won't go into all the details. Just open the account. Your account manager will reach out to you and guide you through the process. So we'll go live by 1.15 p.m. tomorrow. Join us with a funded account. We're not joking here. We're making money. So join us at 1.15 p.m. tomorrow. We're trading CPI live. And we'll be giving signal to trade the news. All right, take care. We'll see you later. Bye-bye. You're registered and you verified. Go ahead and fund. <clears throat> if you're registered and verified, go ahead and fund. All right, bye-bye.